Yes. Oh, hello, Broadway.com. Here I am taking myself very seriously to answer some questions. Ask a star? Hey, Michael, thank you for that question. I really want to play Cinderella in um, Into the Woods. Um, I got to do the show when I was in college and I auditioned for Cinderella and I got a stepsister, which actually ended up being one of my favorite times doing college shows in my life because my best friend Kelly and I played the two stepsisters and I drew these like gigantic lips on my face and colored them in and like 500 eyebrows and uh, that was awesome. I then cleaned my face up and decided to be a little more ingenue. Ah, uh, oh, what show? Well, it was so fun starring opposite him in Les Mis when I was Fontaine and he was Javert. And he arrested me every night, so that was rude. Um, what would I like to do with him? Really, you know what? I think he would be an amazing phantom. And that might get me back to playing Christine for a second. So he's awesome. He can really do anything, and he'd be a great Jekyll and Hyde as well. I'm just thinking of shows for him to do, and then I'll be there too. <laughs> oh, and Sweeney Todd. He would be an incredible Sweeney Todd. So maybe later in our lives we can do Sweeney Todd and I can sing. Where's Pie the London? Tori, that is a fantastic question. You know, Brittany never knows where she's gonna be, and um, it is highly possible that she is going to be guest starring with me um, at 54 Below. Justin, that is probably the most original question I have ever gotten in my life. Fontaine, Ariel, Christine, and Cosette. Well, first of all, I think everyone would be asking Ariel how she changed her life so much because Fontaine's life kinda sucks. Um, so they're probably gonna ask her for some Disney magic. Uh, Cosette and Christine can probably compare their nearly exact hairdos. Uh, <laughs> oh my God, I wanna go to this dinner. Do you wanna come with me, Justin? Cause why don't we also go and we'll just be like this. Ariel, be like sit still, stop using your fork for your hair. Just eat, Cosette, eat. Christine, stop looking so nervous. It's probably gonna go something like that and Fontaine's probably just like, <laughs> just so depressed. Oh my gosh, I don't know if that answered your question, but let's talk about it. I think I'm gonna have to go with some Dr. Seuss, and I wanna do Mr. Brown Can Moo, Can You? And I would wanna be the cow. <laughs> I'm exhausted. I would want to see Barbara Streisand play Sharon Graham in Masterclass. She would be amazing. And she might eat Maria Callas. Yeah. Two fierce people on the stage together, Maria Callas and Barbara Streisand. I'd pay for that. Sharon Graham. Hey June, we're gonna get really real here. My biggest celebrity crush is Jillian Anderson. <laughs> because I was obsessed with X-Files. Uh, when I was in high school. And I was obsessed with Scully and Mulder, but I found myself having such a crush on Jillian Anderson her Scully because she was so um, sensitive and so caring and I'm really feeling um, 
flustered talking about her right now. So Scully and Mulder both, actually I, I have a huge crush on Scully and Mulder, but I'm gonna go ahead and say Scully, Jillian Anderson. Hey Chloe. I have, I love your question actually, because I get asked this a lot, and fear is a part of this, of this world, and this business obviously, but um, one of the things that I, my mantra is, you are enough, you are so enough, it's unbelievable how enough you are. And if you say that to yourself before you go on stage, it really helps, because that is just reminding you that who you are, how you show up in this world is enough as it is. So you don't have to add anything extra, you don't have to prove anything to anybody. And Titus, um, when we did Little Mermaid, he wrote me an email one time when I was about to do my first um, public appearance as, as Ariel, and he said, Sierra, you have nothing to prove, only to share. And I use that all the time in my life. The other thing you can do is just breathe. Breathing is awesome, and know that you are enough. <music> Ashley, my sister Summer, I'm going with Summer, the cellist. She loves, first of all, Disney villains. She used to be all the time, play all the Disney villains, so she was Maleficent. She would quote the movie all the time, so that, that's like the biggest diva of them all. Um, Ursula, Jafar, all the divas. Captain Hook, it was not me. She'll probably say it was me. <laughs> but I say it was my sister Summer. She's cool. Hey Jacqueline, thank you for your question. Um, I am open to everything in this world, and I definitely want to do a solo, solo album before I die. And uh, it's just a matter of when the right time is and what songs I feel the need to record for all time. It's the same way that I'm picking my songs for my cabaret at 54 Below, um, is what things that I feel really passionate about putting out there and that reflect Sierra. So yes, eventually we'll get to a solo album and I'm gonna let the universe decide on that one for me. Susanna, here's three things right here. Sunglasses, cause no one needs that in their eyes. Ladybug iPhone, or Tentomushi, I just went to Japan and I learned the word. <laughs> the only word I learned was Tentomushi, that's Ladybug. And this notebook, I'm not actually kidding, I really do carry this with me all the time. And this, if I've ever taught you in a master class, you recognize this, because this is the notebook I write down all my affirmations and my quotes and stuff that I share with you guys. So there's three things right there. I'm not gonna lie, I'm having a hard time answering this one. <laughs> I have no idea what's in my fridge. The thing that I keep coming to is my Brita. My Brita water filter is always in my fridge because I love cold water. So that's always in there. And like, probably some butter is, oh, and some eggs are always in there. I love eggs. I wanna answer this from my college Self, which is a while ago now because I don't really listen to show tunes so much anymore but when I was in college I couldn't live without uh, Thoroughly Modern Millie starring Sutton Foster um, and I couldn't live without Sunset Boulevard obsessed and I want to play Norma Desmond one day maybe in a five minutes I'll be old enough um, and was the, uh, oh, and I loved uh, Jekyll and Hyde because I wanted to sing like Linda Etter. I used to take it to my voice lessons and be like, can I sing like that please? But then I learned I should probably sing like myself. Hey Emily, uh, good question. Well, Ramin, I think my favorite thing about working with Ramin is that we share the same passion for this as our creative outlet. So we, um, we, when we first met, it was like, 
chemistry right away, which is so awesome. So you, we didn't really have to work at, get, we had the same sense of humor right away. We bonded over Will Ferrell um, in Anchorman, which then is probably gonna be the dream musical is, you know, if they ever did a musical version of Anchorman, you got your cast uh, right here. Um, <laughs> so, um, but we, you know, he's now, he's one of my best friends in this life and we love just, we're just, we're idiots, really. We really, <laughs> we don't take ourselves all that seriously and it's so great to have somebody to play in this life with and he's one of those people. I was doing summer stock and I was playing Ellen, the third chorus girl from the right, in um, Oklahoma, and this is my junior year of college. And the scene in Oklahoma that goes on for quite some time when Judd keeps being like, and two bits, uh, when they're trying to like auction off Lori. And so that he kept coming on and saying, and two bits. And then this <laughs> little kid in the audience goes, does he keep saying two bits? And everyone, and everyone turns up stage like this. <laughs> it's just everyone's shoulders go because that's what happens when you know you can't. And the whole audience is laughing and everyone just like, that was unprofessional. But it was so funny. <laughs> It is scary to say um, that you're happy about something, actually. I found that in my life, that it's scarier to be like, yes, this brings me joy. And sometimes it felt like the default is to just say what brings you down or to be around complaining people and feeling like getting sucked into that. That's really easy to do. And it wasn't serving me. And I can't serve the world if I am being negative or choosing to see the rain. So. Um, Things like yoga, things like meditating. Um, I'm a huge fan of Wayne Dyer. I read his books and listen to his podcasts and stuff. And um, he's extremely positive and great affirmations and things like that. I think Oprah and Ellen DeGeneres are also two awesome examples of women who are just like, you know, giving everything that they can to this world. And I, I want to be like that. So. Uh, what bums me out is when I feel so, when I feel like there's people who have so much and they can't see how much they have and they are choosing to see the negative side and not serving the world and it's like oh it's so it's so easy but it is the hardest thing as well to decide to to make a choice to be authentic and happy so. I challenge you and everyone to make a choice to see the other side of it. You guys, what an awesome way to spend my day. Thank you so much for these questions. Come and see me uh, do my cabaret, my solo show at 54 Below on August 19th and August 26th at 9.30. Um, it's gonna be an awesome night and I hope that you all can come.